drastically. I mean, morning. Uh, so, today we're still in the very exciting part of everything. We are uh, learning what a derivative is. Um, so, everything grows. <clears throat> We're doing great. Oh, you're alive. Good job. All right, so yesterday, So yesterday we talked for a while about what the what uh, the slope of a graph is, and we arrived at this formula. We arrived at two formulas actually. Uh, I like the second one better. Make it's easier to compute most of the time. Um, if you have a function, you plug in you plug into Two letters in there, two expressions, and you compute a limit, which is almost always zero divided by zero. I mean, the denominator is always approaching zero, and and that's the slope of the tangent line. So they were going to talk about a different problem with the same solution. Um, the different problem is uh, the problem of instantaneous velocity problem of what is it? What does it mean for for you to be driving at this moment at 40 miles per hour? Uh, if you're, you know, if your velocity is changing the whole time. Instant. Instantaneous, instantaneous. Uh, so the answer, here's the, the answer. The answer is that the instantaneous velocity velocity at time Let's say t equals a is uh, well. The answer is that it's the limit of the average velocity. Um, the average velocity. <clears throat> in a time increments approaching zero. So, um, so that, that is what it is in words. Um, in, so, if there's a, so, if there's a function, if f of t is a function uh, that gives me the, the distance travel, time t uh, 
then what is it? So what is this formula that I just, what, what is this sentence that I just wrote in a formula? So I want to find the average speed, the average velocity. The average velocity, um, so the average velocity I have to find between two moments in time. Uh, so it has to be t equals a and and t equals something uh, something close to a. I could call that b, um, but based on what I realized yesterday that calling the small interval h is pretty convenient. I'm going to call it t equals a plus h and think that h is a number, it's a number that I'm going to make, uh, make, it, make it approach zero soon. So what's the average velocity? This is a double-edged question. Uh, the question I'm really asking is, is there anybody out there? Yes. Right, thank you. So what's the average velocity? taking notes. Um, it's interesting given that I give them to you as well. So um, I know you know what velocity is. You've told me in the past. If you if you travel from Baton Rouge to um, New Orleans, and it takes you an hour, an hour and a half. What was your average velocity? If you travel from Baton Rouge to New Orleans and it takes you an hour and a half, what was your average velocity or how would you find your average velocity? In that trip. Distance over time. All right. Distance over time. All right. Thank you, Miles. Uh, exactly. The average velocity is the distance traveled. Um, between t equals a and t equals a plus h divided by the time it took me to travel that distance. The time passed in the same interval. So, um, uh, so the distance we travel, so the distance we travel between one, the interval, um, if at t equals say I traveled a hundred miles and at t equals a plus h, I traveled 105 miles, that means, uh, that mean, what, what, distance did I travel uh, between between those? <clears throat> All the difference, right? The distance I travel between one time and another time is the difference between the difference of the distances, the total distances up to one and the other. So in a formula, this is f of a plus h minus f of a 
because this is the total distance. And, and when you subtract the total distances, you get the distance that you travel in that amount of time. And, and the time that passed between A and A plus H is just H. How much time passed between six seconds and six plus three seconds? Well, it's three seconds. So this formula is the formula for the, for the average velocity. It looks exactly like the, the formula for the speed, which is why, uh, yeah. So A, a lot of times be zero if you're starting at like, if you're starting at zero? Uh, yeah, A could like, be, yeah. I mean, if I'm asking for the velocity at T equals zero, you know, so yeah, it, it, it often is zero, doesn't have to be. Um, we could always make it zero by just renaming the time, you know, so if I, if I give you a problem, you can always say, well, now I'm going to measure time from five minutes instead of from uh, what they call t equals zero in the problem. <clears throat> so I guess the answer is it's up, it's up to you. OK, so. Um, so that's the average velocity, and now we said the instantaneous velocity is the limit of the average velocity. So the answer is just going to be um, write this formula and put a limit in front of it. Instantaneous velocity is the the limit of the average velocity as a, as the time interval gets very small. So that's the limit as the time interval gets small of the formula I just wrote for the average velocity. So um, the exact same thing, the exact same answer we gave yesterday, except the problem is completely different. <clears throat> so um, let me do an example, but before that, let me say what the derivative is. Um, So the derivative of, um, of f at x equals a, it's this, uh, it's this formula that appeared twice already. And we write it f prime of a. Uh, we say prime, it's an, it's an apostrophe is what it is. And the definition is by this limit. Which um, is also the exact same number as this limit. So I would say that the instantaneous velocity of, uh, of you, uh, as you're moving is the derivative of the, of the distance traveled. And I would say that the slope of a tangent line, the, of a tangent line to a graph is the derivative of the derivative of that, uh, the function 
was graph I'm doing, I'm looking at. So um, here's an example. Are there any questions? I'm, I'm still kind of confused with like, so like yesterday we were using like, we were calculating the slope and everything, but it seems like we're pretty much using the exact same formula to calculate instantaneous velocity. We are, yeah. So we're still like doing the same thing with like, ca like calculating the slope. Like if we were to like graph uh, your speed throughout like the various points in time, we're trying to use like a, the, like the tangent line to find like, um, if you if you were to graph your your distance traveled over time, the slope would be the speed. Uh, so okay, uh, let me give you an example, and then I'll draw a graph. So um, the example in the in the book uh, is. Um, no, it's vandalism. Um, it says an object is falling from the CN Tower. Um, let's say, let's just say a thing is falling. Um, and it's, um, and after seconds and after t seconds um, it has fallen let's say 5 t squared uh, meters So I gave you a function telling you how much distance it has traveled. In this case, travel down. Uh, what is the uh, instantaneous uh, velocity or speed? speed um, after three seconds. <clears throat> so, um, so that's the question. It's exactly the question of finding the instantaneous speed. So, so the answer is gonna be the derivative. Um, so, the distance we traveled this is um, I'm gonna call it f of t it's 5t squared um, so um, so the the velocity the speed speed at um, three seconds. It's going to be, um, well, it's going to be, it's going to end up being the derivative. Um, it's going to be the derivative at three, at prime of three. Uh, but let's see why in this example. In case, so if you if you didn't like letters, 30, uh, 30, yeah, it's 30. Good job. So um, if you didn't like the example with, uh, I mean, not example, what I was doing before with letters, let's do it with a concrete example here. Um, so the average speed between 
the t uh, no not t three three seconds and three plus h equals the distance traveled over the time that have to, that has passed. So um, so this so the numerator of the distance that we have traveled equals um, the distance traveled at the end minus the distance traveled at three. That's the distance we have traveled in between those two moments in time. I really hope travel is spelled with two L's because I've uh, written it like five times already. Um, divided by the time that has passed and the time that has passed between three seconds and three plus H seconds. Um, well, it's the difference between the two of them. That's just gonna be H. Uh, and for the distance traveled, so for the distance traveled at three seconds, I have a formula, it's five T squared. So I just plug in this formula. And the same for the distance travel after t plus h seconds. This is um, five, and then wherever there was a t, I plug in uh, the time. So for one of them, I plug in three plus h. For the other, I plug in three. And the denominator is um, h. Okay. Yeah, so, before I move slides, yeah. So you plug in five t squared for both of them. Yeah, for I said at, at any moment in time, uh, the distance is five t squared. So both at time three and at time three plus h, it's the same formula. Can you just do ten t? Uh, I can't do it. I don't know where you got that from, Matthew. Does that make sense, Miles? Uh So you pl uh, oh okay yeah. So I did find t squared for all the distances. Because it's a formula it's supposed to work for any uh, time. Okay. So h is just like a blank value. Like it doesn't actually have a value. You just plug it in 3 for a. H, well, yeah, H in principle, I could plug in anything for it, but I'm trying, what I'm going to do is do the limit as it approaches zero. Okay. Um, so I'm not gonna, I would like to plug in zero. I can't, because you can't talk about the time, well, you can talk about the time that passed in zero seconds, it's zero, but you can't talk about the distance traveled in zero seconds, you didn't travel anything. And then you don't get, you get zero divided by zero, which doesn't work, which is why you you write a limit instead. Um, so H, when I write H, normally it's something that I'm going to make approach zero, I guess. Autumn, yeah, did you have a question? I saw your microphone. Um, I also say, why didn't you, well, not why didn't you, but couldn't you have wrote 10 T? Okay, well, you all know too much. So, yeah, I can do, I can just have 10 T, but um, you know that because you know how to do a derivative, but we didn't learn that yet. So once we once we learn it, which is pretty soon, uh, we can do that, but yeah. <clears throat> so, um, okay, so let me finish this computation. So I was here, I had, uh, this was the average uh, velocity. Let me simplify it. 
very carefully. I have the square of a sum. The square of a sum is not the sum of the squares. One of these days, I'm going to stop write, writing these identities using algebra. It will be a beautiful day. So um, definitely not the sum of the squares, because there's another thing in there that comes from the distributive property or from foiling, if you're that kind of person. No judgment. Oh, oops. minus. Minus. Can I see the answer I got for the numerator? What's that? Is that? Can I see the answer I got for the numerator? The answer you got for the, uh, yeah? What did you get? Um, I, I got 30x plus 5x squared. 30x plus 5x squared. Uh, yeah, I'm calling them H, but that's what I'm that's what I'm about to get, I think. So, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. That's fine. So, yeah, so, okay. So so five times two. three squared, I don't need to multiply because it's going to cancel with the other one. Two times three times five is 30. Uh, and then I have five H squared. And here I have Forty-five, but these two cancel, which is um, expected because the numerator should be zero if h is zero. Like I said, the distance traveled, and again, uh, after zero seconds, we all know it's zero sec is zero meters. So um, this formula is thirty h plus five h squared divided by h. Now this, there's h's everywhere which means that these are going to cancel. But I know some of you are tempted to do some BS like this. Don't, because that doesn't work. That is not how multiplication works. How it works is that if you have H times a sum, that's the same thing as, oh, h times everything in, in a sum, that's the same thing as h times the sum. And now these are both multiplying, these can cancel. And here I have 30 plus 5h, which agrees with what Adam was telling me, which is great. Makes me all the more confident that this is correct. Okay, so this started, this was the average speed. in the interval between uh, three and three plus H. So the instantaneous speed would be the limit from towards X towards zero. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the limit as H approaches zero of the average speed, which I got a formula for over here. So, um, uh, it's 30. This is a continuous function. So, what, what are the units? So, here's an interesting question. What are the units of this? I mean, I know in math, we don't like units. We pretend like everything is one. But, uh, they, they help you make sure you didn't make a mistake. Is it um? Is it meters per second squared? No, uh, it's meters per second. So um, because it's speed, right? And squared would be velocity. And over here, so the numerator was supposed to be meters. It was distance. Yeah. The denominator was supposed to be second. So I divide that, and I get meters per second. So when you um. When you're solving this equation, do you have to separate, like at the top, do you have to keep the five times three squares separate? Or like, is there a certain situations where you have to keep it separate? Or can you just always like combine it with the rest of the equation immediately? No, not at all. You can combine it. I kept it separate because I'm lazy. Um, and I would argue being lazy is a good quality, it means you don't do work you don't have to. 
And here, I I never had to multiply these things out, you know, so I didn't feel like doing it. But I could just write 45. Okay. Okay, so um, some of you might be wondering why Matthew got the right answer five minutes ago. The reason for that is that um, finding derivatives is, is pretty is pretty easy. Um, I mean, you learn to do it, and then it becomes pretty easy. It's, it's like you can find the derivative of this function in your head uh, in an instant. Um, so that's what's on the menu for uh, the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, just learning to do, and, and another maybe not surprising piece of news for you is that we can find, I, I can give you formulas for any derivative that you can think of. Um, yeah. So the derivative would have been 10t, and then you just plug in a 3? Yeah, that's what the answer, uh, that would have been the answer, yeah. But I'm also, I mean, I'm, also, I'm interested in, sure, that works, but uh, if we know why that works, then we can solve more than just one problem, you know. Because presumably, unless you're Matthew, the answer can't be ask Matthew or ask Adam, who also knew. Um, okay. So, and also, I mean, I did this to illustrate again what i was saying about the average velocity but we could have just started this problem by saying the speed is f prime of three and then write this formula directly because i knew i was going to get this formula um okay so so that's how the derivative appears at instantaneous speed how uh and also how it appears uh a slope and one last example and also notation. Um, so basically, I mean, you can do the derivative of any function and the function doesn't have to, you don't have to be thinking of the graph. You don't have to be thinking of, um, of the, of, of, it doesn't have to, the, the variable you put into the function doesn't have to be time. Uh, I mean, if it is, you could think of it as the speed that something is changing, you know, the speed that the temperature is changing in this room, for example. Uh, that's not, I mean, it's a velocity. Is it a velocity? I don't know. But it's not something that's moving. Um, but in general, um, it always means you're, you're finding the rate of change. So, um, so you, we have a function. So let me do another example. Um, so I was trying to look at, um, so here's a function. The, there's a, there's a function. that tells me the, the cost of X cookies at this um, cookie store that I'm sure you all know about. So if they want to sponsor my YouTube video with like three views, then go for it. Um, so, so the, I mean, this function is interesting because it's not, the function is not, uh, that a cookie costs, um, what does it cost? I'm looking at the prices right now. What the hell? It's so like $2 or four. Like $2. So it's not two, $2 and two cents according to fastfoodmenuprices.com. So um, the function is not uh, that the, the function is not you you won five cookies you paid five steps that 
because eventually this you start getting deals. Uh, so it goes like this. So I'm gonna call it um, C of X, either for costs, or either for cost or for cookies, I guess, for cost. Um, so um, if you buy one, it's two dollars and two cents, which is pretty expensive. If you buy a six pack, uh, then it's eleven dollars. So you're not paying two dollars per cookie; you're paying less. If you buy twelve sugar rush, I feel like I've seen this in Parks and Rec. Uh, if you buy eighteen, so somehow the cookies are getting cheaper. Um, I like what I like about this menu is that you have to buy like hundreds before you can tell that they're actually getting or they're not that getting that cheaper. Like you buy hundred cookies and you're saving forty dollars. <clears throat> so something like this. Um, presumably they don't have any other deals. So um, the question, so the question I have for you or for ourselves is that this is a function uh, and and the question is what is the meaning of the derivative in this case? So, oh, oh yeah, I'm sharing the right screen. I'm still looking at the cookie menu. So this is a function um, that I'm not drawing the graph off. I'm not, it's not a speed of anything. There's no time involved. The cookies cost the same every day until 3 a.m. So, um, but, but it's still a function and I can still talk about its derivative and it's still um, meaningful. I mean, this is not an actual practical example. You're just gonna, obviously you're just gonna buy whatever cookies you feel like, but uh, you know, if I'm talking about an actual business question where you're wondering how much it costs for you to produce a thing you want to sell, uh, might be uh, might be important for you to understand the cost and how it changes. So the thing is, what is the what is the derivative? So the the derivative is the cost of buying H more cookies um, and, and then divide by H. So what is this formula? What is it telling us? So in words, this is so C of 99 plus H is the cost of buying 99 plus H cookies. Um, C of 99 is the cost of buying 99 cookies. And H is H. And I'm out of space. This is no copying and pasting. Right? No, oh, no copying and pasting. Okay. Um, so I have to it primitively. So what do I get when I subtract from 
the cost of 99 plus h cookies i subtract the um, i subtract uh, the cost of 99 cookies um since there's since you can't actually find 99 on the table that you put you go in between like the interval where 99 would be and on the graph that would be between 50 and 100 so you would use the cost of 100 minus the cost of 50 over 100 minus 50. okay uh the cost of 100 minus the cost of I mean, I think, I mean, in practice, I think I would have to, if I, if I want 99 cookies for whatever reason, I think I would have to buy like whatever deals add up to 99. But what, what I was asking is, what is, not what number this is, I don't care that much, uh, but what, what does it mean to do the subtraction? What is the answer in one word or in one sentence instead of as a difference of two things? Like for example, when I was saying before that the distance traveled after four seconds minus the distance traveled after three seconds, that difference is the distance traveled between seconds three and four. So what is this difference in costs? Is it the cost of something? So just um, let me put it another way: if I I sell you some number of apples and I charge you some number of dollars, then if I sell you one more apple, I charge you three more dollars. What's the difference? What, what, what's the meaning of the difference between those two prices? I sell you X apples and I charge Y dollars. Um, if I sell you X plus five apples, I charge you Y plus 10. What is the meaning? What is the, what is the number 10 here? I'm confused. So like for the X plus five, are you saying that forever, how many apples you buy, you'll get five more? I'm or saying five? I sell you some number of apples, which doesn't matter. I'm not telling you which, how, um, how many they are, but I'm saying then I sell you five more and I charge you $10 more. Uh, so what is, is 10 constant? Yeah. But what, what is it? What is, what am I charging you $10 for? You're getting scammed. I'm selling you the apples. What am I charging you $10 for? If you, if you, if you pay, if you get five more apples and you pay $10 more dollars, You're paying ten dollars for five apples. Ten dollars is the price of those five extra apples. Um, so, so now back to the cookies. If what what do I get if I take the difference of? paying for 99 plus H cookies and paying for just 99 cookies. What is that the price of 
the price of H extra cookies. Exactly. Thank you very much, Adam. It's the price of uh, it's the price of getting H cookies after paying for ninety nine of them because they get cheaper. Um, if you the, the first H cookies don't cost the same as the as the last H. So now I have the cost of H cookies and I'm dividing by H. So if H is five, this is the cost of five cookies divided by five. Um, Um, so if I take the price of how H cookies and divide by H, that's giving me the price per cookie. Um, so this is the cost per, per cookie of getting Does that make sense? Okay, one, one yes. So um, this is a very important concept uh, if you like money. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's telling you if, if, you're, if you're buying anything or you know, it could turn you the other way around. If you're, if you're selling anything, if you're making anything, it tells you uh, the change, it, it change, it tells you how much more money you have to spend for uh, getting just a little bit more um, in, in that sense. So it's telling you how cost changes as quantity changes. The, that's what the derivative is. The derivative is uh, change. Uh, it's here, it's, me it's measuring the change in the function as we change the variable. For, uh, this in this case the function is the cost so the derivative is measuring the change in the cost as we change the number of cookies um, now I mean we would take the limit as h goes to zero which doesn't make a lot of sense here because they don't let you buy half cookies so but in the, here the derivative what it's approximating is the cost of buying the next cookie but, so the derivative at 99 cookies is the cost of buying one more and that is getting smaller and smaller as um, it's getting smaller as you buy more cookies which is significant for example if you were you know say if you were reselling these cookies at a dollar fifty uh, the question of when you start your break even would be at, at which point uh, does the, does this increase start being less than a dollar fifty um, this is something in, in, you know, business classes, they call it the marginal cost. This is just the word they use. I have no idea why. Maybe they just like hate using math words, but if you hear say things like marginal cost and marginal profit, marginal income, in, whatever, um, this is what they mean. It just means a derivative. Uh, okay. So I guess uh, tomorrow I'll talk about delta y and delta x and what we mean when we write that, which is nothing new. And I'll draw a graph. We'll talk about the graphs. All right, that's all I got. The recording has stopped. <laughs>